Hello, in this video we will be looking at whether someone can live with you in a council house in 2022. The restrictions imposed on someone who resides with you in your council house are generally determined by the terms of your tenancy agreement. Because each council tenant has a distinct contract, there are varying rights and obligations that may apply to you. If you are on benefits such as housing benefit or universal credit and you want to start living with another tenant, who will also make a financial contribution and pay rent, you will have to tell the local council that your circumstances have changed. This might result in a deduction in your benefits each month as there is more than one person living with you. If the person you want to start sharing a home with is a spouse or civil partner, you will be reassessed as a couple. This might affect your housing benefits or council tax benefit. Similarly, if the person moving in with you is over 18, they will be classified as a non-dependent and your entitlement will change accordingly. You will receive a deduction for each adult living with you in your property, even if they are part of your household or family and do not pay rent. This is because the local council expects that any non-dependent will be responsible for making a financial contribution to the property by paying a share of the rent or tax. If you are planning to have someone move in with you in your home, it is important to ask for your landlord's permission first. If you do not ask for permission from your landlord first, this might be considered a breach of your tenancy agreement. Most tenancy agreements stipulate that you cannot sublet the entire property, however, you may be able to speak to your landlord about your situation. If they give you permission, you can then draw up a new tenancy agreement. If the person living with you in your home is not paying rent, they do not need to be added to the council tenancy. However, this would mean that they would not have any legal rights to the property, and their position will be less secure as they will not be mentioned in the tenancy agreement. If you lived with the person who died for at least a year as their husband, wife, or civil partner and took over a demoted tenancy, you should be able to keep it. You might still be able to take over the lease if you weren't in a relationship with the victim. You'll need to have resided in the property as well. If a tenancy is demoted, it will usually be for one year. After this time period has elapsed, the type of accommodation it was prior to reverting unless your landlord decides to remove you if you assume over a demoted tenancy, it will remain demoted until the 12 months are up. For example, if the lease has been reduced for. If a tenancy is demoted, it will usually be for one year. After this time period has elapsed, the type of accommodation it was prior to reverting unless your landlord decides to remove you if you assume over a demoted tenancy, it will remain demoted until the 12 months are up. For example, if the lease has been reduced for. If the person who died had a fixed term tenancy and did not sign a new agreement, they were most likely in possession of a periodic tenancy. You can generally inherit the tenancy and stay in the property if you were the main home of your deceased relative and you were living with them as their husband, wife, or civil partner for at least a year before their death. If the tenancy was demoted, you should be able to assume it back to its original status. But if the tenancy started as a non-secure, this will continue even after 12 months have elapsed. That is the end of this video, but if you would like to read more you can do so on the help and advice website.